Messi gets past one. Still Messi on that left foot of his tries to curl it in. Let's go, guys. Somehow we've taken the lead in this game. Leo Messi. Sees Antoine Griezmann on that left foot of his. Tries to put this one in Antoine Griezmann from outside the box. Oh my days, what a strike from Griezmann. So welcome back to another episode of the Barcelona Career Mode series. Today's episode is probably the most important episode of this season as we've got the very first El Clasico of the season. Real Madrid are perfect in La Liga at the moment. 13 games played, 13 wins. They've got a four-point advantage over us. And this game at the Santiago Bernabeu is a chance for us to cover up some lost ground. And apart from all the drama that the El Clasico brings, we've got our final Champions League group stage game against Olympique Lyon. We're going to find out if we can finish first in this group because this game against Lyon is important as both teams are on 13 points at the moment. So this should definitely be a pretty big episode in this series and if you guys are enjoying this series, make sure to show your support by dropping a like in the video. That would be greatly appreciated. If you are new around here, make sure to subscribe for more FIFA 20 career mode content and let's get this one underway. Press conference time and if you guys want to get involved, drop in your questions down in the comment section below. Transfer window is looming, so we do have some transfer-based questions in today's episode. First one, why don't you sign Paolo Dybala in replacement of Messi when he starts dropping in stats. Simply because I don't think this is the right move. We've got Ansu Fati growing into a better player as we progress through this series. We've got Oscar Hara, who's proven to be amazing whenever given the opportunity. We've also got Fernando Romero, who's coming up from the Youth Academy. I don't feel the need of signing another forward because I think we've got enough depth up front with all the Youth Academy players coming in. And also Messi at the moment, even though he's going down in his, in his stats, he's still performing for us. So I don't think Dybala is an option at the moment. Next question, change the manager's outfit. It's been the same since the beginning of this series. And you guys are right, it's been, what, 27 episodes now of the Barcelona career mode and we've barely changed things up. So I'm going for a more casual approach now because I'm bored of the suit and tie and all that sort of stuff. So this should look pretty good. We've got, of course, these white trainers on as well. And also, if you're wondering what on earth is that cap, well... I thought it looked pretty similar to, of course, one of those Peaky Blinders cap. Now, for those of you guys have that have watched Peaky Blinders will know it's one of my favorite TV shows. And yeah, that's what I've gone for. It looks interesting, I suppose. Let's use this for a few episodes. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Next question, how come you never wear Barcelona's blue alternate kit in any games? Well, that's because I don't have that available to me. Apparently, you've got to start a brand new career mode to get those kits in your save. And because we started this career mode day one when FIFA 20 launched, well, because of that, we don't have that kit available to us, which is a real shame. But of course, I'm not going to go ahead and start a brand new save just for that purpose. So for this series, we're going to have to deal without the, of course, third kit. But that's the press conference wrapped up. Let's move on. So it is Marc-Andre Ter Stegen winning the Player of the Episode award after doing an absolute madness in the last one. Go ahead and watch the previous episode where he played against RB Leipzig. The guy legit made, what, eight or nine saves and all of them were incredible. And that's why you guys voted for him as your player of the episode. Hopefully, he keeps this kind of form up for us. Hopefully, we can make more progress with our season goals in today's episode. Goals from Ansu Fati would be brilliant. Clean sheets as well in La Liga. Goals like Griezmann's in the last episode from outside the box would be amazing as we still need to score seven more goals from outside the box. Hopefully, we can see more progress with our season objectives. So we start off today's episode with a pretty big game in La Liga. In fact, today's episode, every game is huge because we've got Villarreal to play, Olympique Lyon in the Champions League, and then the big one, El Clasico. So we've got to be ready for today's episode. We're playing fifth place Villarreal. This is going to be a tricky game, but I don't want to be dropping points before that mammoth game against Real Madrid. So we need to beat them. I've made a few changes to our team for fitness reasons, but for the most part, we've got all our big players. Leo Messi starts, and in form, Antoine Griezmann starts up front. Oscar Hara being given an opportunity on the left is pretty huge. We've got Arthur in midfield, Alenia giving an opportunity as well, so Debo starting as well. The Stegen in goal. We're playing Villarreal at the Ceramica. Let's go out there and pick up all three points against them. It's not going to be easy though, they're fifth in the league. Releases Oscar Hara again, a massive opportunity for the youngsters. He's pushing forward now. Oscar Hara on the attack looks to curl this one in. Well, he's got to definitely work on his shooting. Is that 
was a terrible attempt. Oh, I've been beaten there. Todibo has just been caught lacking in terms of pace. But Longley, with probably one of the best defensive challenges in this series, goes sliding in and wins the ball back perfectly. Brilliant defending from him. Antoine Griezmann releases Oscar Hara as the Spaniard is pushing forward. I see Messi making a great run. Messi shoots and somehow the keeper and the post deny him. The cross from Oscar Hara was inch perfect. And I feel like Messi really should have scored, but he got super unlucky there as well. Gerard Moreno on the attack. Now Trigueros back to Moreno. Long lay again. That was actually brilliant defending. He literally stopped the two players from linking up there all on his own. And now that might actually start a counter-attack as here's Oscar Hara. Flicks it inside. Goes for goal on the volley, but that was never going in. Oh, we've given way too much space for Villarreal to attack into. As it's Pedraza pushing forward, ball played into Gerard Romero, he makes the save, no on the rebound. That is such a stupid goal to concede, man. Gerard Romero puts Villarreal into the lead and this is an away game as well. What are they doing in terms of celebrating? I mean, are they trying to push each other? Anyways, Villarreal have taken the lead, Sodibo couldn't stop the cutback, good link-up play. Testegen made an incredible save but he couldn't stop the rebound attempt and well, we are a goal down. I think we need something extra in our midfield because our midfield has been terrible in this game. So Busquets is coming off. We're bringing on Fabian as well. And you know what? Let's bring on Usman Dembele. Not that Oscar Hara has been terrible, but I need someone who is, you know, more proven up front in this game. Frankie De Jong. Oh, brilliant pass into Usman Dembele. Can he control it well? That first touch was absolute class from Dembele. But the cutback was just atrocious. I'm struggling with cutbacks, man, in FIFA 20. I mean, in those situations, it should be a guaranteed goal for us. But I just can't find the proper passing angle. But right now, it's Griezmann. Oh, no. Manu Trigueros with a chance. Todibo going sliding in. But it's the Stegen who had to make the save. I mean, we're a goal down and we're still letting Villarreal create the chances. We've been appalling in this game. Finds Antoine Griezmann. In behind to Trent once again. Does he have the pace? Here goes Trent Alexander-Arnold. A massive chance for him here. Trent shoots. No, the keeper saves. Usman Dembele on the rebound. Come on, guys. We've equalized in the 83rd minute of this game. Usman Dembele, the super sub, comes up clutch. Credit to Trent as well for bombing forward and scoring an important goal for us. I mean, not scoring. Well, basically assisting the goal. I don't know why I said scoring. Trent again with the shot. Saved by the keeper, Dembele, right place, right time. On the volley, it was actually a tough finish, you know, because... But Dembele got this one completely right, and it was in the back of the net. Barcelona right back in it. I'm not sure if there's enough time, though, to win this game. Let's see what happens. Now it's Antoine Griezmann. We might be able to break through. Here goes Griezmann on the charge. Griezmann with his pace. I'm going to try and curl this one in, and we've done it again. Antoine Griezmann is just sensational in this game. At the death, we've saved three points. In a situation where we are four points behind league leaders Real Madrid, we need to continue winning. And it wasn't looking likely. Villarreal looked like the better team until we scored the equalizer. And now Antoine Griezmann coming up clutch with a fantastic finesse shot from outside the box as well. A brilliant goal there from Griezmann. And somehow we've managed to basically secure all three points. What a moment for us in this series. Oh, we might be giving away a chance to Villarreal. Here's Juan Cuadrado. I've got to be careful. Longley is on a yellow card. Arnold looking to push forward. He's broken through. He shoots to Stegen. And the death makes an incredible save to deny the German. It is still 2-1 to Barcelona. It's been an incredible game against Villarreal so far. Full time and we've secured the win against Villarreal. Away from home at the Ceramica Stadium. Tough game of football, man. A really tough one. Antoine Griezmann coming up clutch as we get the job done. Barcelona pick up all three points in this tough fixture away from home against Villarreal. Press conference time. Are you confident to keep this streak rolling? So as you guys know, we are currently unbeaten in La Liga. It's going to be difficult to, you know, keep this streak going because we've got Real Madrid coming up soon and they're also unbeaten in fact they are perfect in La Liga so far but we need to beat them so hopefully we can you were lucky to score the late winner weren't you I guess we did have our fair share of luck in that game because they did create quite a few more chances than us but of course Antoine Griezmann came up clutch for us for the sake of humanity can Real Madrid actually draw points this is getting a bit insane now I mean they're gonna smash through at least 100 points this season at this rate I mean, this is ridiculous. 14 games played, 14 wins. How on earth is this even possible? They're going to become the new Invincibles.
Looks like the scout we've sent to Mexico has brought us an absolute baller. 15-year-old Jose Duarte, a goalkeeper. Looks pretty decent, 80 to 94 potential. Let's sign him up into our academy. Our youth academy is looking pretty darn good right now with some great options all round. Of course, we've just added in Jose Duarte, who's already 58 rated, being just 15, of course. Fernando Romero is the main star of the youth academy at the moment. So up next in La Liga, we've got Girona at home at the camp now. Now, this is a game we are going to simulate and hopefully we can, you know, win this one so we can keep pace with Real Madrid before the Clasico. And I'm going to be using our second team. Just makes a lot more sense to do exactly this and hopefully we can see goal contributions from Ansu Fati. That would certainly be helpful. So let's sim this game, get it out of the way. We get a 1-0 win and it works out perfectly for us. Ansu Fati scoring the only goal. We literally just played Sergio Busquets in this previous game and he's still unhappy. I'm just gonna say you still have your place in the squad as Morales just gone up to very happy which I guess works out brilliantly. Well, Real Madrid still haven't dropped points. 15 games in a row they've won in La Liga. That's actually incredible. I've got to give them credit for that. It is now time to shift our focus to the Champions League as we'll be up against Olympique Lyon in our final group stage game. The winner of this game will decide who finishes top of the group. So this is an extremely important match in the Champions League and it's going to warm us up for the El Clasico. But this is huge as well. Finishing first in the group, you guys know how important that can be in terms of getting an easier opponent in the round of 16. It's a huge game and I'm hoping we can deliver. Will we see more of Koulibaly in this game? Definitely, he is going to start. I'm going to go with probably my strongest 11 for this game. For some reason, the squad morale is a bit dodgy at the moment, especially for a few players. Like, look at Dembele. I mean, what on earth has just happened to him? His morale is unhappy for some reason. His attack positioning is down. His composure is down. His acceleration, agility, and a lot of his stats are down. The same with Frankie de Jong. Why is he upset? Lautaro as well. Like, what's going on in the squad? A lot of other players as well upset. I don't know why. So in this squad hub, you can actually see why a few players are upset. Lautaro wants more playtime and he wants a better contract, which is interesting. On the other hand, Dembele is unhappy because of his own performances. Kubo wants more playtime. What about Frankie de Jong? He's unhappy because of his contract and player performance. So I guess we'll be needing to give Frankie de Jong a new contract soon. The same with maybe even the other players unhappy for that same reason. We've got some brilliant memories from the Olympic Lyon Stadium as we knocked them out in the Champions League semi-finals last season. And I'm hoping for something similar in this game. We've got to beat them and secure that top spot. And that's why I've gone for a very, very strong lineup. Messi, Griezmann, Dembele all start. Frankie de Jong as well, Longley, Koulibaly, Trent, Ter Stegen in goal. I am not messing about. We need to get all three points in this fixture. And you know what? I'm actually considering playing Ansu Fati and maybe even Frankie de Jong because their morale is low. It just doesn't make sense playing those players in this game with their morale being low and their stats being low as well. So I guess I'm going to play Fabian and Ansu Fati instead. Maybe that works. Let's see though. But this is the team that I've gone for. Barcelona versus Lyon. For now though, we can't really focus on that Clasico. We've got to put all our attention to the Champions League and let's get this game underway. Here we go, guys. This is a massive Champions League game for us. Away as well, a big test. Winner finishes first in the Champions League group. And that is something that's extremely important. We've got the anthem in the background as well. Let's put in a proper good performance. That is the Lyon team we're up against. Again, they've got Carlos Soler, Awar, Rebic, an interesting team. On the bench, they don't really have that many options, but their first team is decent. Corne, Depay, Thiago Mendes. I don't understand why they're playing Soler in a CDM position, but that's a decent team. But of course, I, our team is way better, so I'm expecting to win. Finds Leo Messi. Looks to feed Griezmann and already we might be through on goal. Here goes Antoine Griezmann in a 1v1 situation. He's back in France and he loves scoring in his homeland. Antoine Griezmann strikes within five minutes. Messi and Griezmann combining. They just love scoring and creating for each other. Two fabulous players there. As of course Messi finds Griezmann who does the rest. I mean look at the pace from Griezmann. He's just too quick for the Lyon defense and he slots at home calmly no problem at all i mean look at that for a finish and of course we've taken the lead a big goal for us in the champions league away from home now fabian i see messi completely free out wide i go for goal but why did he shoot with his right foot i was trying to you know finesse that one in with his left foot but it didn't really work out well 
Honestly, I noticed such a big difference in my team when the morale isn't that high. Like my players feel quite sluggish in comparison to normal. Hopefully that won't really have much of an impact on the result in this game. But it's good to see that the player morale system actually works. Oh, Messi skipping past a few challenges. Still Messi. Oh, that's Messi at his best. Looks to curl this one in. Leo Messi now scores a sensational goal from outside the box. I think that's our second goal from outside the box in today's episode. Leo Messi this time to score one. Finesse shots from Messi in the series. We haven't really seen them from outside the box, but now we get to see one. Look at the way he turned two Leon defenders and left them for dead. The finish was inch perfect. No chance for the keeper. And it looks like the team have turned up for this massive away Champions League game. Antoine Griezmann looking to push forward. Griezmann finding the cross to Ansu Fati. It's such a simple header, Fati. You've got to be scoring that. Well, our defense could be opened up here. Rebic now, a few skill moves. That's a strong challenge by Koulibaly. Well defended there from him. The Frenchman Awad looking to beat me there. Koulibaly with a strong challenge, but he gives it away with a terrible pass. And we've just gifted Lyon a goal just before halftime as well. That was awful from Koulibaly, I've got to say. The tackle was great, but he just couldn't play it out from the back there. Ah, we've just gifted Lyon a way back into this game just before halftime as well. Here's Arthur, now Leo Messi. Messi could score, another one, no, he drags his shot wide. Ball coming back in, cross comes in as well, Courtney, no. How have we just thrown away a 2-0 away lead? Like, come on man, are we becoming Valverde FC? Like, this is a bit embarrassing now. Memphis Depay puts in a cross and with that our defense just gets opened up. Jordi Alba just can't defend crosses. It's my fault for, you know, allowing Depay to cross it in, but to concede a goal like that when you're 2-0 up, it's genuinely frustrating. We should have definitely tried and, you know, killed the game off when it was 2-0. But we've just allowed Lior back in it. Obviously, as things stand, we will top the group, you know, if the game does finish 2-2. Because we have more away goals than, of course, Lior in. Ansu Fati finds Griezmann. Oh, that's brilliantly done by Antoine Griezmann. He's so good, man. Slays this one off to Messi. Heavy touch from Messi, but he manages to scoop this one. No, it's hit the post. Are you kidding me, man? No freaking way. Ah, oh, man, this game is so frustrating at times. So unlucky for Messi. Bernardo inside to Griezmann, holds up the play well. Lays it off to Leo Messi. This is Messi's chance. He's got to score this. Messi, what's he done there? I tried to stop and, you know, slow the game down so I can, you know, position Messi to get the shot off properly. Instead, I've gone ahead and done that. Uh, that is completely my fault. Just awful. So that's that for our Champions League group stages. We've drawn two all against Lyon. I think we should be topping our group. We'll get final confirmation soon, but very disappointed to have blown a 2-0 lead in this one. Credit to Lyon, they fought back really well. For your last two encounters with Lyon, you could not score a decisive goal. Is your offense having difficulties in scoring? I don't think so. I think it was just that Lyon gave us two brilliant games. I mean, they're a good team. When the Lyon equalizer came in the second half, did you hope to get back in front? I mean, we aim to win every match, but I've got to say, once they got the equalizer, we kind of struggled to, you know, get back into rhythm. We were missing simple chances and all that. It was frustrating. Getting some training done, and look at that. Takefusa Kubo has gone up to a 77. Pui jumped to a 78 as well. And yes, I was right. I guess on account of head-to-head -head difference, we finished first in our Champions League group with 14 points. Lyon gave us a tough fight, but hey, the head-to-head -head rule stands. And we get first spot in our Champions League group now. The draw hasn't been made yet, and I guess that's going to be in the next episode. So, I'm actually really hyped for the draw. Hopefully, we'll get a relatively easy opponent in the round of 16. So, after the Champions League round of 16, this is how the top scorers list look. Tadic has just done a madness. Nine goals in the Champions League so far in just six games. Maybe Ajax had to play a qualifying round, and that's why he scored this many, but that's still incredible. Hazard scored in practically every game is played. We've got Thomas Lemar with six, Calvert Lewin with six as well, Piatic with six. Any Barcelona play in the top 25, Griezmann coming in with four. But man, teams like Real Madrid, Atleti, all of them are performing and their top players are delivering. A bit of good news though, Leo Messi is the top assister in the Champions League with four assists in five games. That's actually pretty incredible. But our focus now shifts to probably our biggest game of the season so far as we face Real Madrid in La Liga. Real Madrid have been perfect this season and it's our chance to change that. We're playing them at the Santiago Bernabeu away from home. If they win this game, 
they will virtually have a 7 point advantage over our switch. I don't think we can overturn with the kind of form they've been in so we've got to get at least something out of this game, a win preferably but it's not going to be easy with the kind of form Real Madrid have been in but you guys know Barcelona have a history of delivering and getting great performances at the Santiago Bernabeu and I'm expecting more of the same. Press conference before the El Clasico, the first one of this season. FC Barcelona currently in second place is playing the league leaders, what do you expect of this match? We've been waiting for this fixture, in fact I've been talking about this for a long time, I feel like this is the fixture where we can you know close the gap down a bit. Look at that guys, our manager is so hyped that he can't even sit down for this interview, I'm just gonna say we are ready, we're prepared for this next match. Once again a Barcelona player not winning the player of the month award, it was Borga Iglesias who won it, frustrating but uh, nothing can be done. It's good to see that the squad morale issue has sorted out itself, I think it was because of the win. It's good to see that we've sorted out the squad morale issue, at least for now, most players are back to being happy which means they will be getting a stat boost which I think is absolutely crucial, especially perfectly in time for the Classico. This is how I've got the team lining up against Real Madrid, Dembele, Griezmann, Messi up top, Arthur, De Jong and Bernardo Silva in midfield, Alba, Longley, Koulibaly and Trent at the back with De Stegen in goal. We ain't messing about, I'm going with my strongest 11. I know a few players here and there aren't fit but we can't afford to make changes in this game. We've got to give Real Madrid a proper game. This is a must win game for us and probably this has been for the first time a must win Clasico like in this situation where Madrid have such a big advantage over us. I think this is going to be difficult but exciting. Let's get right into it. That's the Real Madrid team we're facing. Hazard, Benzema, Bale up top. Pogba, Casemiro, Luka Modric in midfield. They've improved their backline with Alexandra and Marquinhos which means Ramos and Marcelo miss out. Vran Militao completing the lineup. This is the team that's gone 15 games 15 wins in La Liga, so we know we're going to be getting a tough match, but it's must win for us. We've got to win at the Santiago Bernabeu. Real Madrid being extremely patient and actually we haven't been able to keep much possession in this game. Casemiro now, back to Pogba. Casemiro again, inside to Hazard and somehow we survive. Ter Stegen collects that one. No wonder Real Madrid top the league. Their passing and link up play and all is lethal and I'm finding it difficult so far. Finally, we might have a chance to conjure up something in this one. Here's Messi on the ball. Does so well to get past Casemiro. Messi releases Bernardo Silva now. Here we go on the attack. Still Bernardo. Goes for goal. Oh, Alexandra has put it in. What have I just witnessed here? An own goal by Real Madrid. We've been gifted a goal. Real Madrid have been so dominant in these first 30 minutes. But then, they've just gone ahead and done this. Alexandro costing his team heavily by scoring an own goal there. Bernardo Silva I think hit the post or the crossbar. Was it saved by the keeper? Let's have a look and see. It did hit the crossbar and then Alexandro. What on earth was he doing man? I guess the pressure from Griezmann got to him but that is just awful. To do that in a classical, I'm sure the fans won't enjoy this. At the Bernabeu as well. That is just embarrassing from Alexandro. 1-0 up in the most weird circumstance possible. Gareth Bale on the attack now, inside to Casemiro, back to Bale who strikes first time. Frankie de Jong's going to get a booking for an earlier challenge, a yellow card I suppose, but Gareth Bale got pretty close to scoring then. Also we've got to be careful with Frankie now, last thing I want is him getting sent off in a classical. Bernardo, Antoine Griezmann turns and shoots and no he misses, how has he missed that? Antoine Griezmann could have easily made it 2-0 there but uh, he couldn't. Half time and we are in the lead courtesy of an Alexandro own goal. I've got to say I think Real Madrid deserved a bit more from this first half but somehow we've retained our lead and hopefully in the second half we can put in a better performance. I definitely want to walk away with all three points and to win at the Bernabeu will always be a brilliant feeling so let's hope we can get it done in the second half. Benzema on the ball, in behind to Luka Modric, no Ter Stegen saves and on the rebound Koulibaly, incredible defending from Koulibaly, I don't even know what to say because that was 100% a definite goal that somehow Koulibaly has stopped, unbelievable there, both Ter Stegen and Koulibaly deserve a lot of plaudits for that. As we now move on the counter attack with Bernardo Silva, chance for him to score, ah, I take too much time on the ball there, I should have just gone for a shot earlier on. Madrid continue to attack, I'm sure they feel like they deserve at least something out of this game, it's Pogba, now to Eden Hazard who goes for goal and well, 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 Real Madrid do get that equalised and the thing is, I can't even complain because they've actually been the way better team, Pogba doing so well there to create this opportunity, finds Hazard, the two combine 
and the Belgian this time doesn't miss. We've somehow survived up until this long, but Real Madrid finally get their goal. And that's full time at the Santiago Bernabeu. It feels like a missed opportunity. To be fair, we're lucky to get away with a draw, but this is a game we really should have attacked and got a result. Well, Zidane has done it, I guess. A massive draw for him, his team in this Clasico as Real Madrid maintain their four-point lead over us. We had a great chance to, you know, cover some ground, but huh, we've bottled it, I suppose. Oh, Pogba just disappeared. What just happened here? Oh my God, he's just reappeared, but what is going on in this game? Uh, that's a tough result to take. We got lucky, to be fair. Although we're unbeaten in La Liga after 16 games, for some reason it just doesn't feel like it. Probably because of how dominant Real Madrid have been at this season in La Liga. Maybe it is just their season, but of course we cannot give up. We've got to continue pushing in La Liga to hopefully get ahead of them. I want to retain the league title this season. So the scout we sent to Spain has brought us some interesting players. Andres Castillo looks pretty good. 74 to 94 potential, 17 years old, a pretty high base overall, so we're going to sign him up. This guy looks pretty good as well, but uh, I'm not too sure. Let's sign him up and just see how he is. We've got some more talents in here. Ivan Miranda. I'm going to keep him in the academy for now and then make the decision soon. In fact, you know what? Let's sign him. 79 and 94 is huge in terms of potential. The other two I'm going to scout for a bit. No, let's sign Daniel Lugano as well. So we've actually added quite a few new players into our academy. Hopefully in the next episode, we can push through in La Liga and get some good results. And of course, see Real Madrid drop points, which by the way is highly unlikely. I might actually reveal our Champions League round of 16 opponent as well in that next episode. And also the transfer window opens up. So maybe some transfers in that next episode. A lot's going to go down. It should be exciting. And hopefully you guys are enjoying this series. Time for a quick season goals update. At least we've done well with our objectives in today's episode. I mean, gameplay-wise, it's been terrible. So we're at six clean sheets, which is good. Eight goal contributions from Fatih. But the best thing is we scored two goals from outside the box, which should really be helpful for our objectives. Before we end off the episode, it is time for you guys to make your vote count for the Player of the Episode Award. And I'll be honest, I struggled to pick out two nominees because of how bad we were in this episode. But... Koulibaly I thought was superb in that game against Real Madrid. We would have conceded a lot more without him, so he's been nominated. Trent as well was superb in that win against Villarreal. He helped us score the equaliser with that shot he had, so that's why he's been nominated. Koulibaly and Trent, those two are nominees. Click the I button on the top right of your screen to vote for either of them. So that's the end of today's episode, and I'll be honest, I'm a bit deflated after recording this episode because of how bad we were. We bottled the Champions League 2-0 lead. And of course, against Real Madrid in a game that was so important, I couldn't get the win. A bit disappointed, but we pushed forward. Next episode, hopefully we can get back on track. So if you guys have enjoyed today's episode, a like would be incredible. Subscribe if you're new around here. And yeah, I'll catch you guys next time.